Good morning guys, good morning everyone. Hi, hello, my name is EJ and I'm back again with another narrated our time lapse video for us to watch and talk about and whatnot. Uh, so yeah, today is very very interesting because we are doing one of my favorite artists. Uh, we're doing a master study of one of my favorite artists, Vincent Van Gogh. Um, he's pretty popular, <laughs> I think everyone at this point knows who Van Gogh is. He's just one of those familiar, familiar artists. Everyone has seen his paintings at one point in time. So yeah. Um, typically I talk about the process, but this time I'm really going to concentrate on talking about like what the impetus for this whole illustration is. So this whole master study is based on a challenge in the master study group in deviantart.com. Um, um, and the challenge is called frame before frame after. Um, I think the official challenge was called like frame after or something. Um, but the idea is to take like uh, an old painting, a master painting, a painting done by a master artist basically. And, um, you take any of those paintings and you draw like what happened before that particular scene depicted in that painting or after in you know uh either or uh it started out with robert um doing a study on a contemporary artist um and he did an after scene or something it was like a tarzan scene i forgot who the artist is um he's really popular <laughs> um but yeah i'm kind of blanking out on the name on that one um mr so robert did that and then anna did another one of claude monet um she basically took inspiration from woman with a parasol by claude monet uh, i think it's monet not monet um and she painted the scene of you know the two characters from women with a parasol and she drew like what happened after that painting um which is basically the wind blew the umbrella and the boy had to chase after the umbrella so really cool scene really cool art done by robert and anna uh, check them out in the master study group in deviantart.com um, and I can't remember if it's deviant, uh, deviantart.org or .com. I'm pretty sure it's a .com. But anyways, yeah, check out that group, Master Studies group in DeviantArt. Because yeah, you'll see those artworks that I'm talking about. And those two particular groups. So anyways, because of those two particular uh, Master Studies, um, somebody started the idea of doing a whole frame before frame after challenge and of course i wanted to join the challenge and so here is my entry which is vincent van gogh's starry night but instead of doing starry night i obviously did sunny day <laughs> so um my image can be a frame before frame after because you know day and night it's cyclical <laughs> so you know I, I don't really know if my entries like a frame before or frame after but either way it totally fits the bill so yeah um so yeah <laughs> basically this is the idea behind this particular illustration so um i did this real quick 40 minutes was how long it, it took me to do this um and of course, having references always make things go faster. If I was doing this straight from the top of my head without looking at references, it would have been a lot more difficult, obviously, and it would have taken me a lot longer. But given the fact that I had references, it was easy. <laughs> so, yeah, um, it was easy for me to just take a look at um, the paintings and kind of know what to do just based on the paintings. So, yeah. Uh, this is really interesting right now. I just had to make note of it. Originally, I wanted a sunrise slash sunset, you know, um, and then I decided, you know what? I'm just going to copy Van Gogh's Starry Night and actually put the sun where the moon is, um, where the moon is. And so that's why there's that orange at first. And then I kind of erased it and, 
yeah, uh, move the sun um, somewhere else. But yeah, uh, real quick before I start talking about my process, I guess I'll just quickly glean over my typical process, which my typical process is either a block out shapes, um, which in this case, I didn't really have to block out shapes because I took the original painting of Starry Night and blurred it out just so that I could have like a base painting to start with. And so um, I didn't have to block it out as much, but it did do my sketch, which typically I, I block out shapes, I do a sketch, I lay down my colors, which I do the, my colors really weird and funky. Um, and I do it really fast. And then after that, I put them all in one layer, smudge everything down into recognizable shapes, and then kind of build my layer on top of that. Um, so that's basically like my typical process, which is what I'm doing right now. I'm in a coloring phase where I'm just coloring some things and eventually I'm going to merge all of this in one layer and just kind of slowly um, start to smudge them into recognizable shapes just so that I could get a better base paint. Anyways, the reason why um, I wanted to go over that real quick um, is because I was going to make notations on some of the other things that um, I wanted to talk about in this painting. Um, the The very first thing that I obviously there there i go I, I totally moved the sun to where the moon is so yeah eventually that sunset scene <laughs> disappeared into just a regular day scene or it just turned into a regular day scene but yeah i wanted to talk about um some of the things that you know i kind of had to make note of and figure out the very first thing that I kind of had issues with initially and this was even before the recording of this video was was to try and find this particular um, brush in Krita that would have been awesome for this painting and the brush originally was called like oil brush or something I don't remember what it was called um, it got renamed I have a feeling that, that name particular brush got renamed but whatever this brush was, I used it for my Theodoros Rally uh, study a while back. And basically the, the brush is really tough to work with because it literally acts like an oil paint brush where it picks up everything on the canvas and kind of mixes everything. So it was, it was an interesting brush to work with, but at the same time really tough to work with because it really blends everything. And I originally wanted to use that brush um, because even though it's a tough brush to work with, I, you know, I kind of wanted to emulate the feeling of the oil, oil painting that, you know, Van Gogh and all the impressionists did back in the day. So, so yeah, I, <laughs> I tried looking for that oil brush and I suspected that it got renamed into something else because I could not find it. So I basically have to settle for this other brush, um, which is some, I forgot which one that I settled for. Uh, it's going to show up in a second uh, on the on the middle right where the brush presets are. Right now I'm using this smudge brush, my blending texture brush that I love so much. Because it kind of gives like this whole pastel effect, right? So this is me smudging everything down and slowly erasing everything. So yeah, anyways, that was like one of the first issues that I had. Um, that was <laughs> interesting to try and figure out. And then of course, there's uh, there's also the issue of like lighting and whatnot. Because obviously the lighting was going to be slightly different, you know? But it really wasn't that much of a problem as I originally thought it was going to be. So yeah. Um, so yeah, the other thing I wanted to mention about is of course the the differences in in the sky painting. You know, the swirls in the starry night is very very iconic. And um, oh, before I before I forget to mention, there's this also someone also did a study on Van Gogh and did a sunny day scene instead of starry night art by Moser. He's uh, on YouTube and whatnot. Um, anyways, check his video out. 
but in his video he did you know he stuck very closely to the patterns in the starry night while i decided to go a little bit you know a little bit wilder um a i didn't know art by moster did this particular study when i did this like right before i did this i have never encountered him at all and so when i was doing this i didn't know that someone else had done a van gogh sunny day scene uh it wasn't until after you know i was finished with this piece that i finally found out that someone else did it so it was really interesting you know to do a contrast to compare and contrast with the way both works were done um art by moster did extremely traditional way he pretty much just followed the patterns and the swirls of the sky me on the other hand i absolutely love the cloud patterns that the wheat field cypress wheat field with cypresses that's what the painting is called it's another van gogh painting but i love the patterns on the clouds in that particular painting and so i knew that i kind of wanted to mishmash some of van gogh's painting which is pretty much what i ended up doing um uh so yeah the swirls and patterns on a sky is not the same as the swirls and patterns on starry night you know the whole composition is still the same the cypress tree is still there and the town is still there and obviously the mountains they're all you know in accordance to the shape of of the original starry night painting but as for the sky it's obviously completely different um so yeah i i did the wheat field with cypresses um and that's what i copied instead and originally i think i was looking for a sunset scene by van gogh but i don't think i found one because like i said i originally was gonna do a sunset scene but in the end i just ended up doing a regular daytime scene so yeah but yeah um this was such a fun painting to do really fun painting really quick obviously because i already have references so um yeah it went by really quickly and originally i just wanted this to be a speed paint of sorts because um i was limited in time and i wanted this as a warm-up um i originally thought i was gonna hit like an hour an hour and a half i think when i was making this or i think i had a budget of an hour specifically an hour um but yeah i ended up just doing it for 40 minutes which was nice um so yeah now i'm just in my detailing phase which you know my detailing phase is pretty much the same um for the most part basically what i do in my detailing is that i delineate my edges just so that you know my shapes read better and i accentuate the shadows if my shadows needed a little bit of darkening and then i add highlights and i do it section by section um so right now i'm doing the sky you know i'm kind of making the clouds more obvious that's what my delineating the edges mean you know where i'm trying to like sharpen the edges of some sort um obviously i watch out for the background i don't want the background to be too sharp um because they're supposed to be fuzzy you know and too sharp of an edge kind of calls attention but yeah uh this one i'm doing in the background and then slowly i'm going to start working on the foreground uh, you could see me work on the trees right now, you know, uh, sharpening the shape of that cypress trees. And yeah, I'll just be doing that over and over again, uh, section by section throughout my painting. <laughs>
Alright, so this piece is close to being finished. Uh, you can see me working the town right now, kind of, you know, adding some uh, outlines of sorts, some shadows, just to kind of indicate where the houses are. Um, so yeah, um, but yeah, I'm just basically just trying to finish up this speed paint. Um, now I kind of wonder like what it would be like if I if I'd taken my time to do this study. Um, it would have been interesting. Although, you know, in my defense, impressionism is typically done really fast, real quick. I mean, that's what they're typically known for. I mean, they do a lot of plain air paintings. And when you do plain air paintings, you just have to be fast because you're trying to beat the sun. <laughs> so basically, yeah. Um, plain air painters are typically fast painters so um wouldn't be surprised if this original painting was done i don't know two hours three hours maybe i'm not sure but either way it was a very very fun exercise trying to figure out you know the van gogh scene in the sunny setting so yeah um it's definitely interesting and I remember having such a hard time with the town too. I'm like looking at the, me painting the town right now. I remember trying to figure out like which houses are which. Because, you know, some of those lines just got really, really fuzzy. And I just realized too, the Van Gogh's painting has outlines too. Maybe that's where I was getting the inspiration for the outlines. Because typically I don't leave my dark, harsh outlines. I typically don't leave that in my paintings. I typically try and erase that out. Um, but yeah, looking at the Van Gogh painting, uh, I can actually see that there's some outline there. So maybe that's what I was <laughs> taking. Maybe that's why I, I was inspired by that. And so I, I put back the outline or something. I'm not really sure. But, uh, yeah, very much a fun challenge for sure. Check out the master study group in DeviantArt because really, uh, they have some very, very fun challenges. And, um, yeah, this is probably one of my favorite ones that I've joined so far. So, yeah. That's it. This is the end of it. Thank you guys so much for watching it with me. I will catch you guys in the next video. Like and subscribe. Good night.